Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to look at functions, continuing my course on Node.js and JavaScript for beginners. So functions, for many people, are the point at which they start to feel um, that they're not quite sure what's going on with JavaScript. Um, many web designers, I think, use a bit of JavaScript and are okay with it to a point, but with when it gets to functions... Well, maybe they're still okay, but then they gradually start to lose the thread of what's going on. Uh, so if you are a web designer, welcome to the course. And if you're not, um, that's great too. So let's uh, start with use strict here. What, what actually is a function? Well, in mathematics, there's an idea of, of a function which is fairly strict. And a function in mathematics basically takes in some kind of number, um, not necessarily a number in the sort of traditional sense of it, but it takes in some kind of a number and it, it gives you back another number. So it's like a black box where you, you give your function a number, it, it may or may not do something with it, and then it gives you another number in return. So you can think of it like a mapping from one set of numbers to another. But anyway, in programming, uh, functions are something a bit, a bit different uh, but similar. So a function is, is basically a collection of statements which you can then easily run. And um, functions can, they can sort of accept data as we're going to see, and they can give us data back. But in this video, let's just take a look at a really basic usage of a really simple function. It's just a collection of statements. And there are, there are actually quite a few different ways of defining a function in JavaScript. And here we're going to look at the, probably, this, probably the simplest way of creating a function and the way that's also most similar uh, in a way to most other programming languages, I would say, the sort of oldest way as well. So let's suppose we have um, some series of statements. So for simplicity, let's just yeah, let's, let's actually have a loop. Let's write for let i equals 0, i less than 3, i plus plus. Typical for loop. And in there I'll just write console.log. And uh, let's write hello and i just to get some output. So if I run this program now, let's run node functions.js, we get hello123. Now, um, this might be some really useful code, which we might want to run at various times in our program. And what we can do is package it up into a function, and then we can run it when we want. So function syntax, to create a function, we can use the, word f the keyword function. And then we need to give it a name. Let's um, call this function greet, just a name that I've made up. Uh, and following that, so if, if you look at this, it's, this is a bit like declaring a variable, except instead of let or var, we've got the keyword function, but then we've got a name like we would with a variable. But a key difference here is that we then have two round brackets like this, and then we've got two curly brackets, which as with loops is where we put the code that we want to run. So let's take this code and transfer it into the function. I'm just going to use the hold down the option or alt key and use the down arrow here to move it. And Visual Studio Code helpfully indents it for me. So I've taken this for loop and put it inside this function here. And we can then run that code whenever we want by typing the name of the function and again two round brackets. And I'll finish this statement with a semicolon, which I think is good practice. It's the best thing to do. Let's clear the console and run it. And you can see it does the same thing as before. So uh, some things to say about this. Um, for one thing, when we have curly brackets like this, I, I think I've mentioned this before, but we need to really... Um, we need to really make sure we do this. When we have curly brackets, the code inside them gets indented by one tab. Now, some people prefer using spaces, uh, and 
programmers can get famously opinionated about this. So there's a, a, a really funny TV series called Silicon Valley. And in that, there's a programmer who splits up with his girlfriend because he thinks you should use tabs to indent things and she thinks you, <laughs> she thinks you should use spaces. Probably funny only to a programmer. But um, programmers do get you know, strong opinions about this. The most important thing, though, is consistency. If, if you're working in a team of programmers that indent stuff with four spaces, typically it would be four, then you should do that. And if they use tabs, then you should use tabs. Fortunately, though, um, I prefer, you see, I prefer tabs. And I hate typing out, I really don't like typing out four spaces. But fortunately, you can always configure editors to turn tabs into spaces or spaces into tabs or whatever. Anyway, the important thing, the vital thing here is that between curly brackets, you've got to indent um, the code that you put in there. Uh, and I'm going to say one by one tab because I like to use tabs. So within these two curly brackets, we've indented all of this code by a tab. And because we've got more curly brackets here for the for loop, this code gets indented by another tab. That's very, very important. And if you're using Visual Studio Code, you can actually... Um, so on, on the Mac that I'm using here, if I hold down the Option key, press Shift, and then F, it formats the code automatically for me. So on Windows, I'm guessing that will be the Alt key, Shift, and F. It might pop up a dialog asking you to choose um, a formatter. But, you know, you should be able to do that. If you've installed some plugins for working with JavaScript, you should be able to get auto format working so that when you press Option Shift F or Alt Shift F, it formats your code automatically for you. Um, try, I, would, I would strongly recommend trying to get that working. Uh, you should always strive for good formatting when you actually write your code. But... I, I think for beginners especially, auto-format uh, is, is very, very helpful. It gives you a check, enables you to make sure that you have indeed formatted your code reasonably. And well-formatted code is much easier to read than badly formatted code. So this, this isn't just a cosmetic thing. As far as the JavaScript interpreter is concerned, formatting is cosmetic. But as far as we're concerned, it's vital it, may, it makes your programs maintainable and readable, or it's a vital part of making them maintainable and readable. Okay, anyway, let's get back to the main subject of this um, tutorial. So what have we actually done here? So we've, we've created a function called greet, and this function greet is a collection of statements. In this case, it's just got a for loop in, and we can, we can then run this function greet whenever we want. So here we're defining the function. We're saying what this function does. And here we're calling the function, or in other words, we're making it actually run. So this does not run any code. It simply defines a function uh, containing this code. It doesn't actually run anything. This is what actually runs your function. So here we're calling the function. We're actually running it. If I don't put this in, let's comment it out, and I just run this program, it does nothing. Let's put it back again, and then it runs the function. Now, the, the thing about this is we can call it whenever we want in our program, whenever we need it. Let's call it again here. So I'll just copy that, and there we go. Let's have another one. So now I've got, I'm running that function twice. You can imagine this is um, extremely useful. Uh, for one thing, it means that, you know, if you've got the same uh, collection of statements that you want to run multiple times, you don't have to type them multiple times, and indeed you shouldn't. You know, if you're running the same thing multiple times, put it in a function and call the function multiple times. For another thing, it's a great tool for um, making your programs just, like, making them more readable and making them more maintainable, sort of breaking them up into separate pieces that you can call when you need them. We're going to look at more advanced ways of uh, of 
arranging or structuring programs, but this is a great start. We, can e- we could even call greet in a loop if we want, then effectively would have a loop within a loop. Let's just call it one more time. So hopefully you get the idea. There we go. Um, so again, the thing is always uh, is just to practice this. Type out this, get it working, and then try to be a bit creative with it. Try to define your own function, call it whatever you like, and put some statements in it. You don't have to have a loop. You can put what you like in a function as long as it's valid JavaScript and try calling it. And don't forget, try to get auto format working. Use auto format constantly is my recommendation. But also try to format code nicely when you actually write it as well. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.